Awake, arise, lift up your voice, let Easter music swell. Rejoice in Christ again, rejoice, and on his praises dwell. Good morning, welcome to the Daily Office, and thank you for joining me. This is Morning Prayer for Monday, April the 8th. The scripture for this service, Psalms 1, 2, and 3, and Daniel chapter 1, verse 1 to 21. Open my lips, my mouth shall declare your praise. Alleluia, blessed are they that walk not in the counsel of the ungodly. Alleluia, Psalms 1, 2, and 3. Alleluia, blessed are they that walk not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stand in the way of sinners, nor sit in the seat of the sorrowful, but whose delight is in your law, and in your law do they meditate day and night, and they shall be like a tree planted by the rivers, that brings forth fruit in due season. Their leaves shall not wither, and whatever they do shall prosper. The ungodly not so, but are like the chaff which the wind blows away. And therefore the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For you know the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. Why do the heathen rage, and the people imagine a vain thing? The rulers of the earth take counsel together against you and your anointed. They say, let us break their bands and cast away their cords. You who sit in the heavens shall laugh. You laugh them to scorn. Then you speak to them in your wrath and vex them in your sore displeasure. I have set my ruler upon my holy hill of Zion. I will declare the decree God Most High has said to me. You are my son, and this day I have begotten you. Ask, and I shall give you the heathen for your inheritance, and the whole earth for your possession. You shall break them with a rod of iron, and dash them into pieces like a potter's jar. Therefore be wise, O rulers, be instructed, O judges of the earth. Serve God most high with fear, and rejoice with trembling. Kiss the son, lest he be angry, and you perish from the way, when his wrath is kindled but a little. Blessed are they that put their trust in him. O oh God, how many are they that trouble me? How many are they that rise against me? How many there are which say, There is no help for him but God. But you, O oh God, are a shield for me, my glory, and the lifter of my head. I cried to you with my voice, and you heard me from your holy hill. I lay down and slept. I waked, for you sustained me. I will not be afraid of thousands of people that have set themselves against me all around. Rise, O God, save me, my beloved, for you have struck my enemies across the face, and you have broken the teeth of the ungodly. Salvation belongs to you. Your blessing is upon your people. Glory to you, source of all being, eternal word and Holy Spirit, as in the beginning, so now and forever. Amen. Alleluia. Alleluia. Blessed are they that walk not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stand in the way of sinners. Alleluia. The lesson is from the prophet Daniel, chapter 1, beginning at verse 1. And please pardon the raindrops on the roof. In the third year of the reign of King Jehoiakim of Judah, King Nebuchadnezzar of Babylon came to Jerusalem and besieged it. And the Lord let King Jehoiakim of Judah fall into his power, as well as some of the vessels of the house of God. These he brought to the land of Shinar, 
and place the vessels in the treasury of his gods. Then the king commanded his palace master to bring some of the Israelites of the royal family and of the nobility, young men without physical defect and handsome, versed in every branch of wisdom, endowed with knowledge and insight, and competent to serve in the king's palace. They were to be taught the literature and the language of the Chaldeans, and the king assigned them a daily portion of the royal rations of food and wine. They were to be educated for three years, so that at the end of that time they could be stationed in the king's court. And among them were Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah, from the tribe of Judah. The palace master gave them other names. Daniel he called Beelteshar, and Hananiah he called Shadrach, and Mishael he called Meshach, and Azariah he called Abednego. But Daniel resolved that he would not defile himself with the royal rations of food and wine, and so he asked the palace master to allow him not to defile himself. Now God allowed Daniel to receive favor and compassion from the palace master. And the palace master said to Daniel, I am afraid of my lord, the king. He has appointed your food and your drink. If he should see you in poorer condition than the other young men of your own age, you would endanger my head with the king. And Daniel asked the guard whom the palace master had appointed over Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah, Please test your servants for ten days. Let us be given vegetables to eat and water to drink. You can then compare our appearance with the appearance of the young men who eat the royal rations and deal with your servants according to what you observe. And so he agreed to this proposal and he tested them for ten days. And at the end of ten days it was observed that they appeared better and fatter than all the young men who had been eating the royal rations. And so the guard continued to do withdraw their royal rations and the wine they were to drink and gave them vegetables. And to these four young men, God gave knowledge and skill in every aspect of literature and wisdom. And Daniel also had insight into visions and dreams. At the end of the time that the king had set for them to be brought in, the palace master brought them into the presence of Nebuchadnezzar. And the king spoke with them, and among them all no one was found to compare with Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. And therefore they were stationed in the king's court. In every matter of wisdom and understanding concerning which the king inquired of them, he found them ten times better than all the magicians and enchanters in his whole kingdom. And Daniel continued there until the first year of King Cyrus. Here ends the lesson. Now let us offer our prayers and petitions for the peace from above and for the loving kindness of God and for the salvation of our souls. For peace in Jerusalem, unity in the church and peace in the whole world. For all of our church leaders and for all clergy and ministers. For Barack, our president, and Joe and John, and for all the leaders of the nations and for all who are in authority. For the aged and the infirm, especially Marjorie, Ronald Francis, and for the widowed and the orphaned, and for the sick and the suffering, especially Melissa. For the poor and the oppressed, for the unemployed and the destitute, for prisoners and captives, and for all who remember and care for them. For all who died in the hope of the resurrection, especially Charles, 
and for all of the departed. For the Mercy of God community and for the Sisters of St. Francis of Philadelphia, that God, who's begun this ministry, may bring it to fulfillment. For the intentions of all who've asked our prayers and for all of your intentions. Our beloved which art in heaven, holy is your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us as we forgive others. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Let us pray. We delight in your law, O Most High God, and walk in your ways. Grant us your blessings, and may all our endeavors find favor in your sight and prosper. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. We trust in the mercy of God forever. And glory to God whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to God from generation to generation in the church and in Christ Jesus, now and forever. Amen. Alleluia.